I've been at the Asian Glow because I've been drinking all my wine. And Asian Glow is, I lack an enzyme in my saliva called um, aldehyde dehydrogenase that digests alcohol. So basically it kind of becomes a little more toxic for me to digest, but that's like a small tangent. I was talking about Hekka and this is kind of all new to me too. Um, so I'll try to give a like brief synopsis of my current understanding. Hekka uh, can be represented, Egyptian magic can be represented as um, in three different gods or three different energies exerting um, three different powers. So the power behind the gods is threefold. Kind of like uh, the, the trinity. Um, so Hekka is the creative aspects of the heart and the tongue. Um, abracadabra, I speak as I create. Um, and so Hekka, Sia, and Su are, Hekka is Sia, Su, Hu. And Sia and Hu are the power behind um, the gods, the, the power of Hekka. And Hekka, um, some people, and like I guess in the Greek pantheon is Hekate, the triple goddess. So, uh, Sia is a personification of the heart, um, the per your perception and your insight, uh, I guess, maybe kind of like your intuition. Um, who? is the personification of the tongue and authoritative speech. So your, um, your actions and your words. So, um, the goddess of Hekka, the personification of Hekka in Egyptian pantheon is where at Heka, where Heka is translates to she who has great magic. So Hekka, Sien and Su, were re re responsible, um, the Trinity was responsible for the creation and the maintenance of the world and the, rec the regulation of human birth, life, and death. So there's no like division between um, life, you know, being good and death being bad um, because all three represented a bit of each. Um, they were just different aspects of, uh, existence. Um, in, um, Sumerian culture, this god, or goddess was represented by, um, Ninatsu, and, or this power of Hekka was, uh, um, represented by Ninatsu, and in Greek, it was, uh, uh, mythology it was uh, represented by the Asclepius um, and like I said Hecate in Greek and then Hermes Trismegistus um, the Hermes the Thrice Great was kind of the representation of the male um, personification of these same powers so there is uh, male personification, which is Hermes Trismegistus, and then there's a female divine feminine um, representation, which is Hecate or he you know Heka or where it Heka So that's kind of my brief synopsis of what um, Heka is and what being a sandwich is to me. Um, based on my studies so far. Um, so, in uh, the pyramid text, um, Hekka is a supernatural energy that the gods possess, divided in kind of three parts. And it is the root of their magical power. And magic being the control of your, of a person's um, personal energy, um, a balance of how they operate in the physical world. Um, so that means 
their thoughts, their actions, and then your conscious thoughts and actions in the physical world, um, and then your subconscious thoughts that are like running in the back of your mind, and then also your unconscious thoughts, the place where you are in your dream world. Um, so everything in existence exists in a trinity, the conscious, subconscious, and the unconscious mind. Um, this can be represented as well uh, as your conscious um, mind being your, um, I guess, your mammalian mind, your subconscious mind, I don't know, maybe I have this mixed up, being your bird brain, your like higher thought, your more um, elevated self, and then your subconscious, uh, I mean unconscious mind being like uh, your reptilian brain where um, you're just acting out of instinct. Um, so balancing those three aspects of yourself is fully embodying the powers of Hekka, um, the Hekka, Sia, and Su, or Hu. Um, so when, one, when a person can integrate all three aspects of themselves, they become uh, Hermes Trismegistus, Hermes the Thrice Great, the powers of controlling your unconscious, subconscious, and your conscious mind all at once. Or in a divine feminine aspect, being Hecate, the triple goddess. And when I say um, divine feminine, divine masculine, I don't mean like gender. I mean putting out an energy which is either, is a polarity. It's either receptive, which is divine feminine, um, feminine being a vessel for energy, or masculine um, being uh, a pushing out an, an ex external like force of energy. Um, so uh, that's what I mean when I say divine masculine, divine feminine. Um, neither is uh, over, you know, you know, one has one doesn't ha exert more power than the other. Um, they're just different. They're just polarities. And so balancing those two forces um, is represented in um, Egyptian magic as the power of Ma'at. Ma'at is the goddess of um, balance in the world. Uh, it's also, she's also represented in Western astrology um, as the zodiac sign of Libra, the scales. And uh, so I guess I could go off on another tangent like that, but I'm going to stick to um, Hekka right now. So uh, um, I'm also here to, s to just uh, explain I'm, a, I'm an alchemist. Um, alchemy is uh, the study um, in Arabic alchemia means um, the Egyptian science um, alchemia or chemi, uh, also means to fuse or cast a metal um, chem means um, black earth or black earth of Egypt the fertile um, Nile River Basin um, which is KMT, the Nile Valley, um, and it's the Black Empire, the, it, which is like, I guess, Old Testament uh, language for Egypt. Um, and then Alchem versus, is the Black Earth versus the Red Earth, which is the desert sand, this desert sand, which is an, uh, inhospitable to man. So Black Earth means like the fertile ground for your imagination. And when I say imagination, um, 
uh, I want to break down that world because etymology, uh, which is the study of like the root of words, is very uh, important to my understanding of um, the world and very key into my syncretism and in tying all things together um, in my hermetic uh, worldview. So etymology um, is uh, of alchemy. I have to break down the word of alchemy into all of its parts. Um, so, you know, um, so the goals of alchemy are, uh, I think there's four parts. Um, so there's the Christopedia, the transmutation of base metals into noble metals, like transforming lead into gold. Christopia, Christopia. So I think of that as like a caterpillar in a chrysalis, um, turning itself into like a creepy little worm-like form into a butterfly. Um, it's just an easy mnemonic uh, device for me to remember what Christopia means, um, turning lead into gold. Um, another goal of alchemy is elixir of immortality, the fountain of youth, Ponce de Leon. Um, and it, a panacea that can cure any disease in the world. Um, that's one of the goals of alchemy. And um, personal alchemy is um, breaking yourself down, your psyche down, your conscious, your subconscious and your unconscious into um, basically a primordial soup of itself so that you can rebuild yourself into a healthier human being. So that, um, the goal of the elixir of immortality is, would be the cure to, you know, becoming, um, you know, immortal. So, and then another tenet of alchemy is, um, the magnum opus, which is called, you know, a great work, great work of humanity. Why are we here? You know, that's, everybody wants to know that. Um, that it's the perfection of the human body to create a philosopher's stone. So basically to take yourself, you know, as a very imperfect, you know, lump of clay um, and smash that, you know, your carbon molecules all together um, into, you know, a lump of coal and then finally compress that and refine that into a beautiful diamond um, to perfect yourself into your greatest potential work. That's the goal of alchemy. Um, in that process is of, of the great work is um, in four different phases. It's the um, a black primordial soup phase called the Negrito stage, then it moves to uh, a whitening stage called the Albedo stage where um, you're kind of like turning into a little yolk of a being. And then citrin citrinitas, a yellowing or xanthophis. So uh, replication stage of um, like that just original idea. And then Robeto stage, purpling, reddening, ripening of a fruit of yourself um, uh, is the phases of the great work. And then the fourth um, goal of alchemy is gnosis. And gnosis just means knowledge. Um, but knowledge that has been converted into wisdom. You know, it can be, you know, you can have an IQ, uh, off the charts IQ, but if you don't know how to communicate with other human beings, all of the things that are in your mind, you have no social skills and, and you write everything like and keep everything in a like 
lock, you know, lockdown diary, it never sees the light of day. There's no, to me, personally, there's no point in that. So, Gnosis is the goal of alchemy, is transforming all of the things that you learn into uh, wisdom, which is, is Gnosis. And um, as an alchemist, the, my most sacred um, tenet of my alchemy is, is Gnosis. This is, this is why I'm here, um, being scared as fuck, making a YouTube video.